Hello, welcome back. This is still the Polity reaching you live from the Abuja studios of Captain Television. Like I said before the break, we will be having a discussion on the Labour Party and its plans for the 2023 elections as it draws uh, much closer. I've been joined today by the DG Big Tent Nigeria. He's also the uh, DG of the Obi Dati Independent Presidential Campaign Council. I'm talking about Ibrahim H. Abdukari. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. It's good to have you. All right. Uh, th there's a lot happening with the Labour Party, um, a party that now has that has been in the news more than it, it has been, I'd say, for perhaps uh, a lot of its history. Uh, let's talk about something very recent uh, before we move over to some more questions. I'm talking about Dorian Okope, the DG. Uh, first of all, he was um, convicted about a day ago. Um, money laundering of or breaching the money laundering act and he paid them um, the fine and he was let go and then just yesterday he resigned his post how does this affect the movement and the mission well, well thank you viewers i think um i think it's a good to start from uh, his corruption case mm -hmm. i think uh, everyone knows about the history um, um we're not going to get any leaders that are not nigerians that don't have a past and somebody that is 70 years old and 40 years in politics, uh, definitely uh, you may have one thing or another around him. But what stands every other person up is that feeling that what I have been doing before is not giving me the results that I needed. Mm. Uh, some people join politics because they want to make money and they have a lot of money, but the country is still going down. And sometimes they feel that What's the big deal? Now I have money, but I don't have a country. I may stay in Dubai, I may stay in US or Mali, or in uh, Milan, in, in Italy, but you don't feel comfortable. You may even have an island, but you think, every day you think of that in Nigeria. And you, if you pass through government, the, every time one thing or the other will pass through your head and pass through your mind that you have the opportunity. And Nigeria is a great country. And you start to feel that, what can I do? Let me tell you the truth of what the European and a lot of Nigerians don't understand. Even the Yahoo Yahoo guys that you have seen, even the Amorobas that you have seen, even the bandits that you have seen, nobody deserves to have that kind of life. Yeah. If we have a better Nigeria, they will not be doing what they are doing. They will not be in that position. One day, somebody will come out of that mess and decide he will like to see a better Nigeria. What can use him? He can use any other person. But I think when we come back to the issue of uh, Mr. Doing, Doing has passed through almost everything that you can think of and you can be as a politician. Mm. And he reached a level that he feels it's a time for them to walk away from PDP, set up a good Nigeria. And us, the young Nigerians, we look up to them because we have seen that uh, they have just stay where they are and just keep enjoying the luxuries of uh, being part of the political elite. For example, uh, our our principal, Mr. Peter Obi, he's a billionaire. He was former CEO, a former governor. He don't have to f pass through this to 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 take all the bashing and everything. He just stay in the He was the best presidential candidate just yesterday's election in 2019. So he will just stay there and continue enjoying himself. But these are some of the people that we're seeing moving away from the traditional politicking and now come back. So what, normally, if he wants to, as our principal, Mr. Peter will be saying yesterday, our struggle is to dismantle the structure of criminality. That criminality or that corruption that we want to remove, actually, it will fight back. It will go after anybody that wants to change that. Let me tell you, the corruption is so deep that some people are taking the same code oil as much as the same crude oil that Nigeria is taking, putting a pipe of four kilometers into the deep sea and taking oil. You think this kind of people just allow you to just work away like that? Do you know how much they are taking in, in, in subsidy? One single person in the government has been caught with 109 billion naira. This is what you're supposed to be thinking. These people they are going to, they will not allow a movement like obedient movement to create that new Nigeria we are asking for. So they come after him. And what I so much love about what happened as you, as you narrated is that he was convicted on something that he has done or almost everybody is doing but if courts say you are guilty you are guilty 
you understand? If I come to your uh, Kastan, I buy a car of 15 million, I give you 5 million euro cash, it's part of what, what he has done. It's illegal, it's no longer. That's what he said. So, so is there almost 20 something charges, but at least he's been convicted, he's been convicted. And a lot of people that are calling us from the other side of the campaign, I say, you know, you see, your DG has been convicted, your mm. DG is a thief. And I told them categorically clear, I know Mr. Peter Obi. I know our vice presidential candidate, Mr. Bitti Ahmed. I know the kind of Nigeria they are planning for us. There is no way somebody will be in that kind of position and he will do the writing. And I said, give me 48 hours. You will see we will do the writing. We have to show examples to Nigerians that it's not just about today. Even in this government, if Nigerian promise and give us that government for us to do, this is the kind of Nigerian we are going to run for them. A presidency where somebody has to take responsibility. I was in Mokodi when we launched one of our campaigns. Mr. Peter Obe stood on ground on everybody and he was tel on television and so on and everything. He said, hold us responsible. So, for what happened during the Okopi is that they said, hold us responsible. We will talk to him. We will fix this thing. And we will put it to the right direction that we're supposed to go. And I love the way he said it. And when he tendered his resignation, he said, I step aside. But I am part of this movement. And I will not relent on my effort till I see the new Nigerian that you young people are dreaming of. Because he's 70 years old. He's a medical doctor. He has been in SC. He has been everything you can think of. He's just doing it for us. And we say all the time, people don't understand what we are saying with the obedience movement. We are saying we are actualizing the young Nigerian dream to these people. We know we can't afford to have a party of our own. We can't afford to have a presidency of our own, but we will, he, they will help us so that we channel. No matter what happens, young Nigerians, everybody knows from 2020 uh, uh, that we are going to adopt somebody. Or we are going to, every politician knows and has filled the input. But it happens. God will look at all these political gladiators and God will choose one for us. And God has chosen Obidati for us and we rally behind them and make the Nigeria get and we are so happy. Ben Okope has to resign. It's a it's a it's a it's a welcome address. We know politicians don't do that. We know if a party that the presidential the chairman of the that party has been accused not once, not twice, but he's still holding to not even accused by just people like me and nobody, accused by sitting governors. But he's still holding up to that his position. But notwithstanding, at least we are setting the peace and Nigerians are seeing us, and this is the new Nigeria we are asking for, and this new Nigeria we are seeing to the Labour Party LP. That's fair enough. Uh, uh, but I, I really like to get your response to some of, like you already mentioned that your opponents are saying things, and I think one um, key message they've been trying um, to pass or to permeate um, the space is that uh, Peter Obi is no different from what we already had. There's a part of the old order. He was with um, the ABGA, then he moved to PDP, now he's Labour Party. Some people say he has jumped more parties than even others. And uh, so this um, conviction, people see it as a confirmation that just as um, your party would accuse the, um, the uh, legacy parties of having uh, you know, certain unscrupulous characters around them, they're saying it's the same. And they're not saying now that they don't have, they're just trying to make it as though you are all the same and there's no difference. How do you respond to that at all? Yeah, the difference is us. Mm. We Nigerians, we are the difference. We are the one that choose who we want to follow. We have candidates in front of us, 18 different parties. And we decided among them, who do we think is having less baggage? Who do we think is will give us uh, a small headache? You understand? And then what are the what are the, what are the what, what are the things we're supposed to put in front of us to make sure that we check make them so that we will not allow them to be what they ever they want to be. For example, what happened? We said we are not okay, and a lot of young people are on social media telling him to resign, and he respond to it and he resign. You understand? Then we have part two major parties that the young people around them and within them cannot say anything. 
they take it the way it is. They can't even check why did you go to the television and say blah blah. You can't even say it. You can't even talk negative. You can't express yourself as a young person around them. Some are even saying that governors are not are not uh, what they call it. They, you can't mention like Funke Adeleke in front of him. Mm. Somebody is saying that he can't call the name of an ex-governor. And the highest position he has held in his life is a governor. But because he feels that he is above everything, he said he cannot. So the young people, even some governors, are even shaking, you understand, feeling that they can't even tell. For example, let me tell you what's happening, for example, in that kind of camp. We have a PCC that has been written and names have been given that these are the people that are supposed to run the campaign. But he is not running the campaign to those people. And the other people cannot say anything. They cannot see why. They just keep quiet and just listen so that at least they will be loyal. Because in that camp, everybody must be loyal and must be seen being loyal. But, but, but in our own, is that we are creating this movement. It's an obedient movement. Everybody that feels that we deserve a new Nigeria. And this is what we have taken to this uh, principal, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. I will tell you, we will support you, but let us actualize our dream to you. And he has accepted it. But the other people are saying that it is his turn. It is his time. He has paid his dues. And he's going to be the next president. Even if the, uh, the city president like it or not, even if the North and any other person like it or not, it is his turn. So you can see the difference is too wide. So what they are trying to do is to equate us, how will you equate day and night? It's not possible. You understand? We are the light and they are the darkness. And the dark, you are going to leave the darkness and come to the light and you want us to look the same. It's not going to be possible. Mm. That's interesting. Uh, you definitely have ample time to react to some of um, other things um, uh, happening in the other parties. But um, I, I just want to um, round up with things within the Labour Party. Yeah. Uh, let's talk now about um, the perception, like I said. But now we have, at least, at least uh, from my own um, counting, three key figures in the obedient movement have now somehow been either made to step aside or pushed aside. Uh, during Okupe, the DG, we have the former national youth leader, Arabi uh, Anselm. We have the national publicity secretary, Arabi uh, Abayomi. So uh, these people, and uh, the, the interesting thing is that there is only allegations sim similar, yeah. uh, forgery, uh, corruption, corruption yeah. thereabouts, and, you know, and then um, for the people who remain, who beat the allegations, the allegations are still there. Take, for instance, the national chairman was accused mm -hmm. by the um, secretary, the, pardon me, the publicity secretary, that he um, uh, soon the the or missed or directed funds for departing into his personal accounts. So all of these things are happening and people are saying that they're not in power yet. And we have this, you know, so as you said something about no baggages, uh, which is what people tend to like about your candidates. Uh, you said something about um, the forces that be going after, and uh, I've seen members of your party say that they've tried for Peter Obi, but they can't find anything, you know, but it seems as though those around him are having one issue or another. So what is really the problem? Is this a miscommunication or are the persons around him just, you know, using his, uh, his uh, popularity to gain their own, their own personal uh, missions? No, normally, parties are vehicles for people to use to go to presidency and become somebody that you want to be politically at every level. Without party, I will not take you. And this party has been already set by some people, you understand, and been governed in a similar, maybe, or we can say, the like type of uh, the way the other parties have been run. Mm. And most of these smaller parties, sometimes you just see and float, uh, float themselves. I was having a conversation with one of my friends. He said, you see, my junior brother, or his brother, where he said that, Every season like this, uh, he will even otherwise because he will see him playing well with the money. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the election, everything will just uh, will go away because this is their season, it's their harvest mm -hmm. for politicians. So, what the new money does is that, uh, for example, we've been in Labour Party and we're almost telling the, uh, ourselves that we don't need this kind of rally that APC and PDP are doing. We like to be on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, this obedient movement is born on the street. And he's going to win the election on the street. So going for a rally is not something that will add any value to us. 
it's not even giving us what we really want. But the political political system around it, they are already used to that kind of a system. So if somebody will be given money, then they will share money, they will bring buses, they will bring tents, they will do whatever they want to do. And then maybe they give 100 million. Out of that 100 million, we don't know how they spend it. You understand? It's like that's the kind of uh, system they operate. So when you come with a new system and you come with something that you want to do, a lot of people has to fight that system to change it. That's why our campaign, we have Independent Presidential Campaign Council, you understand, which is helping us now to do that kind of things that around him with the politic, the, what they call it, plastic politicians are used to play around the system. Uh, you have seen in, I think, APC and PDP, for example, uh, when they started returning back the money, they said that they shared the money. Somebody took the allegation. They said the executive NWC just sat down and said, okay, let's share the money that we have put in place. Even if you ask APC now, why is the 100, 100 million naira and the other this and that they have got doing that time? You will not find it because that's what politician does. But what we are saying is that this is, we will take what we can take around the system. We will work with what we can work with around the system now. But when we come in, we have been noticing it and we have been jotting it down. So that it will be part of what we will do. I have a friend um, that I, will, I, have, I happen to sit down and ask him. He ran it can, he ran, uh, a, he ran for a, 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 to be a governor in one of the states, and he spends. He told me that he spent almost more than five billion naira on that process, and he said every day in his life he will dedicate the rest part of his life to make sure nobody spent that amount of money because he wants to be a governor, because he has no, he has felt the pain of other people and why corruption is going to pass this in the country. So that's mean all of us while we are passing through this Labour Party, at the end we make sure that at least we work with this. That's that's what we are asking Nigerians. If we can remove an incumbent president in twenty fifteen, and we have a chance now to remove another system that we don't we feel is not okay. The signals we are sending is that now Nigerians are wiser. We can take any of the 19 or 18 parties as as much as we understand that that person would help Nigeria. And if he refused to, we move to another till we get that respect that we deserve as Nigerians. That yes, we are we are the voters and we are determining who become what. But if we allow them now to use money away, then they will feel that we are in fear and we have to just dance and continue to work. That's why I said 2023 is the most critical and most important time for Nigerian politics. So we have to stand to this change and we make sure that we do it. And also, it's different. If you have a movement and you have a presidential candidate on a party that is, tra that, that is attraction to him, that people feel that he can do something for that. And young people are putting their posters, putting their billboard, putting their on their behalf. Ordinary people, a presenter like you, uh, somebody that is really feel that he is attached to that kind of particular the way we did 2015 Buhari. But we know what went wrong during the Buhari regime. We now realize that it's not about changing somebody. It's not about putting them in president. It's about us Nigerians organizing ourselves and stay on what we believe. So that we can even help him what what type of uh, ministers you're supposed to and also give this kind of pressure so that if there is anybody that is corrupt within the government we will stand on it and make sure that that person has been dropped for example we tried it during the grass quarter uh, issue and case it was something that was very silent you understand but when you just talk up to the street and do that what we need to do and we did it with a lot of people and give pressure to government. So this kind of thing, this is what we are planning to do in the future so that we can now put up what is called the town hall uh, platform where all obedience will now reside in. So that at least after the election, we will still guide the system towards a better Nigeria. So we are not going to create new people. Moses came up from the house of Paro and then you can see what happened to Joseph and you see all the stories that we have both in Bible and in Quran. God chose people at, within those people. Even in Islam, Prophet Muhammad was created from the Quraysh. And they are the con congregation of very, very unruly Arabs at that particular moment. But he picks and breaks a light from out of them and that light shines up to the, what we are seeing today. And that's what is going to happen with Mr. Peter Obi. And Mr. Dette Ahmed. They are part of the system, they grow from the system, but God will take them up 
shake their heart, tell them that I have listened to all what Nigerians are praying for. Because let me tell you, there is no place in art that God has been praised like Nigeria in both Christian and in Muslims. And I know how they have suffered in the midst of abundance. And they have already asked God, please help us. We know our problem is leadership. Give us a leader that will take us to the promised land. And God had answered that. And we can see what is happening to Nigeria today. Everybody that we see becoming obedient, it's not that because we are trying to drop what is called this religious divide. We are trying to go beyond uh, uh, tribe. We are going to go beyond religion. We are going to go beyond sentiment. We just want who is the most competent among them that will take us from this place to the new Nigeria of our dream. That sounds like a plan. Uh, I'll take you up on that and try not to cause a divide. But before that, I'd like to remind our viewers that they can call in to join the conversation or ask their questions. Uh, speaking about the divide, uh, you're a northerner, and uh, I think persons have come to have this impression that um, the Labour Party or Peter B is uh, mostly being supported by persons close to his own uh, origin or his own. Um, tribe or thereabouts. Uh, so when someone asks, uh, what, how are you, you know, a part of this um, drive, a part of this mission, how has it convinced you when there are uh, others you could support who are closer to you and probably can bring more dividends of democracy <laughs> to <laughs> your own region? Speaking <laughs> about the PDP candidate, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we have the APC um, uh, vice presidential candidate, um, uh, Shatima, and so on and so forth. So how did you mm -hmm. end up here? Yeah, Mr. Mary, you just make me love when you talk about somebody attracting a dividend of democracy. Mm. You can just go to Ogun. They have a president for how many years? Mm. Let's go and look at how many dividend of democracy they see in Ogun State. Go to Bayelsa. Go to Otoki. Go to President Jonathan's house. He's been president for six years, for five and a half years. Go and see what did he attract to them. All these big names that we have from APC, from PDP, go to all their villages and their towns. That's the politicians. It's just about them. It's not about anybody. It's not about the nation. That's all they do. So what we are seeing is that because of that kind of thinking, that's the thinking we want to change. That's why I said we should go for the who is the best for this for Nigeria at this moment. Let me tell you, Nigeria has never been polarized the way we are today, which is not supposed to, because we are not the enemies of each other. When God created Nigeria, He put all the resources that Nigeria needed. We have the best of, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, weather, in the, as you can see now today. In other places, they have like minus 20 something degree. Mm. If you go to Europe today, as I talk to you, it's just December, what? You can't go out, you can't go anywhere. We are here, we have to move on AC. If you're in Abuja, you will be feeling the heat. We have the best weather, you understand? We have a rainy season, we have, we have a dry season, we have very you can see people living in houses of mud. You understand? That's how generous the weather and the nature is to us. Number two, the mineral resources underneath us. Even recently, oil has been discovered in Gombe and in Bochi. Well, don't talk about the gas drop that we have in Benue and other places that has never been tapped. When we talk about the hydrological uh, water system that we have that we can convert to a lot of things. If you want to do electricity, we have almost four or five different uh, sources of energy that we can tap to make mm -hmm. everything from wind band to solar system to a lot of things that we can do. God has created us. This is just what I'm seeing. It's just the mega of what God has given, the way that what is underneath of them. The most important thing that God gives us is that human capital. We are 200 million brilliant people. And it has to be tested everywhere. Look at you, looking smart. Look at what you can do. Look at what you do in presentation. Look at the kind of people that are listening to me. We have, take any Nigerian, I always say it, take any Nigerian that is in third class in any of Nigerian university and take him abroad to read. At the end, you, the end you hear that he finished with distinction because the environment there and the learning environment will allow him to now showcase the skills and the ability of what he can do. The sport people, the entertainment, look at where Bonaboy, Whiskey, and others are today. We are not just ordinary. Nigerians are not just ordinary. 
we support we are built by setup to be the greatest nation on earth that's who we are so because of this lack of leadership that's what is keeping us where we are today some people that the Nigeria just belongs to them so we don't want a Nigeria that belongs to few we want Nigeria that belongs to all so in my thinking when i started seeing politics in 2003 and i decided to help uh, to be part of Buhari uh, uh, support organization, Okuma, the TV at that time, uh, in 2007, I designed his first website. I moved to 2011, I was in CPC, I moved around to 29th state with him. I have seen the, the how Nigerians are yearning for leadership, yearning for somebody to come and take them to this greatness, because we have seen it. Even if you are still abroad, you have seen it. If you are still in Nigeria, you have seen it. A lot of people are telling me they are staying in UK and other places. They are working in a very fantastic place. Some even not. But you only see that there is something that is telling them. Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria. There is something there. Even the white people always think and always remember. These people that we are seeing now occupying, the way you see Indians occupying all these big positions in, Nigeria, in the blue tech uh, uh, chip companies, that's how Nigerians are. There is no agency all over the world that you will go and you will not find in Nigeria. Smart, doing well, you understand? Solving problems, even this corona issue and other things, are all Nigerians that are come to design some of this thing that we are seeing today. But we need that Nigeria to work for everybody. We need that green passport to be useful. So what I always tell people, if we keep on this bandit telling us that these are Boko Haram, these are IPOB, these are, these are, we are not enemies. Because in the morning, if we wake up in Kura and Kano, you see Igbo people, Hausa people, putting up tomato and a lot of things, carrying them to where? To the southern part of the country. If you go to the southern country, about you see them putting up their, their uh, 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 clothing system, shoes, everything, moving where? To the north for them to sell. And, and we are not supposed to fight among ourselves. We have to compete among 50-something countries in Africa. In the name of this, this African trade, whatever they are, going, they, are, they are doing now. Apart from doing that, we have to showcase ourselves to the world. As an African country, as black people, what are we selling to the world? What can the world come and understand from us? We have almost 200 uh, different ethnicity that the whole world is uh, feeling that the even yesterday I can see one of the boys the other for yesterday they are returning some of the artifact from Benin that has been taken to at in Germany also. This is what if you go to Sokoto, you go to Sokoto Museum, you have a lot of things that you learn from it. If you go to Benin, if you go to a Yoruba Kingdom, you see a lot of things that a whole world is trying to come and watch here. If you go to Kaju, I think there is one castle in Kaju, which is very beautiful, with, 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 uh, what do they call it at the top of it, uh, um, uh, a swimming pool at the top of it. What about the Karim Game Reserve? You understand? What about Mambia Hills? You understand? These are places that the whole world will come because it's a frontier, it's a new frontier. People that love tourism, they like to go to the new place. But if we stick to that, I am Yoruba, you are Hausa, I am Igbo. You understand? There is no way we can get out of this because this is what they have planted on us. Those people, I always said it anywhere I have my place, I said, those people, that kill Sardona or instigate the killing of Sardona. That's not their beginning. Before they killed Sardona, they were in Nigeria, they killed Sultan Atayru. They, they are the ones that stole those, this thing from, from, from Benin Republic, with Benin Kingdom, they are returning. They are the ones that detain all the, our enemies and big people that we have. And they have now seen Sardona, Taba, Belu, and others are trying to fix Nigeria back to where we're supposed to. They killed them. When Murtala came, he wants to do something. They kill him. They kill Apiola. They kill Eradua. They kill the, the Eradua Simu. They kill uh, 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 Sani Abacha. Let me tell you, even tomorrow, if they see another person trying to take us to where we're supposed to go to, they will still come after him. And they will frame somebody to show that at least it's you killing yourself. Today, bandits are killing northerners. They are full and killing, full and killing houses. They are IPOB killing Igbos in Igbos territory. 
These are bandits killing houses and houses going, killing, killing areas. The way we are feeling and the politicians want us to believe is that no, the killing of able to kill a house is more deadlier here. And then for a, for a house to kill an able here is more serious offense here. Crime is a crime. We stop profiling it. Because those people that are profiling it, they are the agents of those people. They just want to get and make a lot of money. And they are supporting our money. When we are fighting, from Nigeria Delta, Ijo and Ishekri are fighting, IPOB are ransacking Nigerians at the southeast. Bandits are killing us here in the up, 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 up north. You know what is happening? Somebody is taking 450,000 barrels of petroleum every day. Why are we doing this fight? Somebody is collecting subsidy of almost 2 billion naira every day. Why are we doing this fight? Somebody is stealing 109 billion naira. Why are we doing this fight? Our schools are closed. Why are we doing this fight? There is no electricity. Why are we doing this fight? So for them, it's have to keep on telling us that you are not brothers. So that's what informed me that it's supposed, politics is supposed to be beyond that. And we have to show reconciliation. Every nation passed through where we are passing. We know the story of England, Scotland, Ireland. We know how they are. We know how enemies they are. But once they put everything aside, they are one of the greatest nations we have on earth. The similar thing in the US. So why are we not going to get a president that will help to unite us? Because pros prosperity starts with forgiveness. It's the forgiveness that brings unity. Let me tell you, the guy in Rwanda, in Rwanda, in 1994, they had this genocide. And they killed themselves. But when we have a visionary leader, what did he do? He tried to reconcile them and tell them there is no Houthi, there is no Tuzi. You are just Rwandans. As of 1994 to the date, they have a beautiful new country that is proud that every African will be part of. And they have a president that every Nigerian politician will love to be part of that. And this, from 1990 to date, all these politicians have been given the opportunity, whether as a governor, whether as a president, or as a vice president, or a legislator in the state assembly or national assembly. It's an opportunity given to you to unite. That, that's a question that goes throughout to us as Nigerians. I will give you best weather. I will give you best plan. I will give you best everything. But I ask of one thing from you. In the Quran, Allah said, I have created you male and female, and I created you into tribe and nations. Though he says it to me, each other. Every Muslim clerical and underline that thing for you to know each other. That means I have to know what is an able man bringing on the table? What is a Yoruba man bringing on the table? What is a TV man bringing on the table? What is a Jew man bringing on the table? What is a Kanuri man bringing on the table? That's to know each other. And God gave us 22, almost 200 of that distance. So what we need is just for us to say, God, we are going to solve the puzzle because God asks us X. So we're going to find X. That X is just a leader that will just unite all this energy, the hate that we have. Which leader will come and convert that hate into love? Which, which, which leader will come and convert the darkness that is casting upon us into light? That's just what we need. And you will see one of the best country in the world from the, the new Nigeria wants to create. So seeing that and feeling that makes me to select who to be in his camp based on equity and also competence and seeing somebody that can make all these things that I'm seeing so that we can have this Nigeria of our dream. And I think Peter will be that's to my own selection. I feel that I need to be in a place where somebody is humble. I know a lot of people and they are contesting. Anywhere they pass, the same money is missing. And I have somebody that passed so many, so, uh, a place, but no money has been missing. They are even accusing him, why did you even invest? So I'm thinking of coming from left to right. So I think let's do the right thing. We have our chance. We have our man. We have a Muslim. We have a Northerner. We have a Yoruba. 
we, we the North has voted always. Everywhere we went, the North the vote. The vote, the vote, the vote, the vote the would vote. We voted in uh, 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 Jonathan. We voted in uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, or Lusogo Abbas and you. So we, we, we are used to what we are trying Nigerians to see is that we are not the problem. And I want to put it upon somebody like Mr. Peter Obi that is going to carry a very, very big assignment from its own side. Because when some people accuse you of something and now tell you, okay, you are the one that is going to be, you have to prove yourself. He has to prove beyond reasonable doubt that this thing that people are thinking about us, we are not like that. So I'm happy all the time when I see him saying that the most important physical resources or physical asset of Nigeria is the vast land of the north. Because you cannot progress, you cannot do anything if you don't have the actual raw materials for you to do that. With that raw material, is finally is in the north. So I'm so happy that it's something that we are going to sit down, talk to ourselves, and also reach out to, to every other person that can think of us. Let us go beyond that. And this uh, uh, thing is just an 8 eight years thing. Mm. Uh, when some people in the south feel that Bali is coming to, 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 to Islamize Nigeria, He's going to come and do the bidding of the northerners. He's going to be I was mean, I in similar situation like this to explain to some people that are from the southern part of the country and tell them no. Presidency is presidency. Some of these things are beyond the president. We have national assembly that has all the tribes. There is nothing you can come. You have even a council that you have to bring one person from each of the thirty six states plus maybe plus Abuja. You understand? So it's not something that we think that is going to happen. President is going to be a president of Nigeria. Anybody that comes to say, I'm going to be a president of a section, he will not perform anything. He will end up being a loser. Because it's a great chance for you to become the greatest. Up to today, the door is still open. Like, it's not any, there is no any, let's say, record to break. It's just a record to set. We need a new Nigeria, and we, that person that is going to give us that new Nigeria, everybody will be happy with him. And that Nigeria will only come from unity. We have to have forgiveness that will bring unity, and it's that unity that will bring us peace. And it's only by peace, justice, that we can see prosperity. Right, and that's fair enough. Let's move um, deep it, deeper into the plans now. We have an, uh, an SBM report that um, uh, was released some days ago that showed the spread of um, votes. We saw it was fairly shared between, to an extent, the PDP, the APC and then um, some votes also to Peter B and uh, there were about three or so states that were too close to call. Uh, so I'd like to know what is the strategy to for Peter B's popularity, especially in the north. How what is the message that is passed? I, from what you've heard, you've spoken about you know your unity and people coming together and all that. Uh, but in strength, how do we really rate it, especially in terms of as we've been saying the campaigns. We see that even before the campaigns, um, we saw um, one million, is it one million or five million man marches mm -hmm. in different places. And we see these drones, you know, pass and show quite a number. And then we've seen parties very keenly watching the Labour Party for that drone picture everywhere they go. So when they don't see drone picture, they say, nobody came out, you see, you know. So I'd like to know. What is the plan to get that popularity in the north? And there's this belief that is all about Peter B, and that the people joining him are not coming with numbers, they are coming to join his numbers. So I'd like to know, what are the plans in terms of having that right spread, even in the south, because uh, it's not a given that he's going to win all of the south, uh, there are still places that are strongholds of some of these parties. We have the APC still having over 20 states, the PDP having about 11, even with some aggrieved um, members. So what is the plan? The plan is what we are doing today. The plan is to talk to Nigerians. Uh, see, in every religion, the most important thing is God created prophets and prophets goes to talk to people. So what we need in this kind of uh, uh, project is for us to do the talking. Talk to people, talk to them directly to their hearts. Let me tell you, you can convince anybody to accept the Peter of the presidency. It's very easy because we, everybody knows the two major candidates that we have. 
and nobody in his right thinking will say, okay, let's continue using the old method. If he wants to do change, the definition is that you have to do something new. You have to have a lift of feet to jump on up to that up off that clip, going to where it's going to be new. You understand? You can't hold on to what you are used to and keep suffering. You understand? It's just madness. Sometimes that's who we are. You understand? As humans, sometimes change is very difficult. We want to rather see uh, the, the devil that you know. You understand? So the devil will keep on confusing you. What they are using on us is gaslighting. You understand? To keep telling us that rice is 7,500 naira during PDP, gas is 3,000 naira or 2,000 naira during naira is just 187 naira or whatever, uh, foil is this one. It's just gaslighting. The moment APC, PDP wins, Nigeria has already lost their guts. We have to keep punishing them. Because the essence why we created APC at that time is because we have a lot of questions that Nigeria wants to ask with the 16 years of PDP. We have questions about the 16 billion naira spend of SST. We want to know why it's not working. We want to know why our, our refineries are not working. We want to know why, who is that? Because an NSC said that there is Boko Haram in the government and he died mysteriously in a uh, uh, helicopter crash. And we as Nigerians still want to know who are these those people? Now, as Mr. President saying, who is subsidizing who? And Nigerians are so keen. Okay, let's get another government so that we can ask that question who is subsidizing who? And there is the issue of uh, we have to get rid of uh, corruption. And we said, okay, let's bring another person so that at least we can open the can of one and let's understand what's really happening. And we brought in, did this one one thing, and we now brought in APC. And then the questions now accumulated. Now we have more questions to ask, even on top of the questions that we need. Yeah. So what do we expect now? To bring back this PDP or to move again and create another uh, Labour Party, for example, presidency. So that if the questions keep accumulating, we keep changing because the lifestyle of the country is not 100 years. It's not 200 days. In the U.S. today, as being a democratic country, it's almost 200 days. So Nigeria is just how many years now? So it's not our life end. I may go, you may go, other people will come. But let's keep checking them with that. Because I can remember, Fashola is saying that in 2014, that we are begging you Nigerians, please vote us in, you understand? So that if we work for you, and you are not satisfied with what we have done for you, vote us out. He said vote us out, but he said vote us out and bring in P back PDP. You understand? That's the mistake we are making. That's why we are recycling leaders. That's why we see people as old as 70, they still want to win this country. Because what? We allow them to do it. But at this moment, because of what we have tested in 2015, we feel that we are bold enough now to create a system that is going to be away from what they have been doing before, so that we create another direction. So what I'm saying that if we look at what we have today, and you go to the corner, for example, let's go to the interior of the north. In the last report I have seen in Daily Trust and other places, there are almost like 40 local governments, 40 local governments between Sokoto, Kasena, Zampala, can be a major state. 40 local governments that have been threatened by bandits. Now some people said that if you want to find, you want to do marriage, you, do, you have to settle the... And it was on social media, we have seen a, a state where a, a, a local government, I think in Shinkafe also, that they have paid almost 10 million naira, but the bandits say your charges for the tax is 20 million naira, you have to bring the remaining and they are asking government to help them because that's the only way they will allow them to go to their farms and also live their life. So in Birmingham and other places, that's what is happening. So the truth of the matter is that the north that you will used to think before, you understand, is no more that north that we use as that you go to villages, you see nice people, you see doing people doing their farming system, doing uh, rearing their cattle, and just having a peaceful life and things like that. Different change. Mostly of these people are now living in Kuso, for example, as refugees, and they have run away. People have already taken away of their. I know of some of our friends because I school in Kuso too, and they all move their parents from the periphery of the states and bring them back into 
into the into the cities to stay with them. So this is what's happened. I have a friend, my 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 my, my school prefect, uh, my school head boy. His father has been taken from Sana in one of the uh, in Shinkafi. I know how terrible it is for somebody, and you will not find a family in that corner they are talking about that somebody has not been kidnapped, somebody has not been killed, his village has not been. So the trauma of having that kind of system is already in everybody's house. To so now bring the issue of uh, um, a rise of uh, this uh, food stuff, you understand, people cannot even feed themselves because you didn't go out to farm and things like that. Now rice, as I talk to you today, we're talking about 14,000, 42,000 naira. The so-called local rice we are talking about. The Nigeria pumped a lot of billions of naira for us to make sure that at least it's stable at maybe 15,000 or so or below. The now is like 14, 42,000 naira. This Christmas that we are talking about. A small chicken that we saw people trying to do whatever they want to do as how much before you buy 1,500, 2,000 naira. Now chicken goes for 7,000 naira, 6,000 naira. What about the turkey that we used to take during the, uh, uh, the festivity? We went to somebody's winter. So let's go back to where we are in the north. What has been ravaged with a serious drug addiction? A lot of you will not see a family that will not find drug addicts in that particular family. Come and talk about issue of divorce. Out of school children we are talking about. The imagine these are all as a result of unstable family unions. So somebody, because the system has not been checked, you can marry whatever you want to marry. Divorce at any time you want to divorce her. And take that boy to the street to be a uh, almajri. It's all in front of everybody. Before in the north, a son of nobody can afford whatever he wants to be. But now the system is broken linear. Before, if you are a megad, or you are a, 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 a barrel pusher, or you are whatever you are, your child can have an opportunity to go to school. If I list some of the directors I know in Abuja, most of them, their parents are just to years from the village you will see them with this their marks on their faces you see their wives you see the marks on the tribes of being from the far rural areas but now they are here as directors in abuja they have forgotten the life of those people go and see the dilapidated the classes that you can see from the up north so the north need to rescue itself too it's part of the country so you, nobody can blind any northern because looking, we should just vote, vote somebody from our own part. What has uh, them been from part of the north that add value to the northern part of the country? There is legacies of the that are all going and crumbling. Go to NBDC, check out all the houses that have been sold. What have they done with the money? And these are the buildings that were there for the northern Nigeria. What about the Federal, uh, Federal, Federal Radio Corporation from Nigeria? You will listen to a lot of radio stations before you even listen to that radio station. Go to the building, go to their studio and look at their studio in the 21st century. Go to ABU. Now people are taking their children to Niger for schools. To the new Republic for schools. Do you know what ABU is? Do you know how many presidents in Nigeria passed through ABU? How many chief executives and ministers? Go and see the local. So the North to need to be rescued. So when we go out, we go to the radio station, what we need is the talking. People are not talking because of the system they have created. Some few people. So the strategy we have is that we have too much to election. Let's talk. Let's talk Nigeria. Let's talk new Nigeria. Let's talk competence. We should run away from those people that we call. For example, in Zambara is the even center where we launch our Sharia, for example. In Zambara, people are working on gold. That's what I heard from the governor. When he went to Abuja, when he went to submit some, uh, uh, some, some, some uh, major bars to, 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 to the president, everybody saw it at the, at the uh, uh, at 2019 uh, October or so. But why are we today? Why is that that gold not be a beneficial something to the people of Zamfara? We know the case of lead, lead, uh, lead, lead, lead poisoning. Mm. It, it was on news. 
that because of the the uh, uh, exploration of uh, uh, and mining of uh, gold, and children start to become sick in Nansa, Dao, Anka, and other places. It was all over. It was even on CNN. That's gold. Then why don't we harness the place, move these people to where we're supposed to locate them? Gold is money. We don't have to do anything. We extract it. Up to I talked to you today, somebody is mining in Zampala and taking that money to himself. So what we need to do is that we want to bring in a Nigerian that works for everybody. And we know in the North and Muslims that it's not all the time something that you think is good that becomes go good to you. It's God that knows what is good for you. You will see in the family settings, the outcast of that family become the champion of that family. It happens everywhere in Nigeria. Everybody knows it. So based on our training, and what we know about what Islam told us, and also what the Bible told us about the Christian part of the North. Because when we say Ariwa, Ariwa is a mixture of both Christians and Muslims, and a lot, uh, 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 with around 150 tribes around that area. That's been from the Middle Belt to the up north and the, and the, and the northeast. So it's not a just group of just Muslims. That's why it's called Ariwa. That's the area of Sardana. He has never discriminated between the Christians and the Muslims. That's why we have that voting block. But now, look at where we are today. A Muslim-Muslim ticket that is threatening and bringing a presidency that is going to affect the whole future of our next generation of election. And somebody, I was arguing with somebody, he said, African, why are you so much worried about this Muslim-Muslim uh, ticket? He said, why, you, why shouldn't I? I said, why shouldn't I? I said, I give him, I said, okay, assume for example, assume for example, we allow this Muslim solution to go, and we kept quiet, and we go into election with it. Assume maybe we didn't win. Then another person win. Uh, who is having a vice president, Christian? Konkoso, for example. Who is having a pastor, for example. Or Atikura is having a, a Mr. Okua, for example. He now died. So who becomes the next president, for example? Is Okua or the pastor? So what if now the pastor or Okua now decide, said, I'm going to choose my Bible. At that moment, he's, going to, he's not going to run one election. He's going to choose. And he said, I'm going to choose a Christian from the north to be my vice president. So I asked the fellow Muslim, I said, what are you going to do as Muslim? He said, we are going to fight. He said, it can never be for me. He said, but we are not the only people that have feelings. The Christians too, they, are, they have feelings too. They are over 14. They are, they are over, we don't know even the number. There is no place you go to and you stand. There is 10, 20 people and you will not see a Christian. There is no place you go to in the south, 10 or 20, you will not see a Muslim. It's already a destiny. We didn't choose it that way. If God wants, he will give Nigerians to all Muslims. If God wants, he will give Nigerians to all Christians. But he decided, because he wants to create the best country in the world, he decided to give it to us as Christians and Muslims. And we have to listen. And we have been respecting these feelings. But somebody is now treating that. It's evoking and provoking the other section to do a sent sentimental voting in terms of when they wants to vote. So if I join that van wagon, if I put ask other people to join in the I am putting up something that at one day it will break the whole country and will not enjoy it. So what wrong is wrong, we said it's wrong even if it is our own that is doing wrong. And we should not level it to anything. We have to stick to the right thing and we have to do the right thing and we have to accept that we are going to stay together. And I told everybody, if you can go and freeze, freeze yourself, go. That's the kind to freeze you to come back in the next hundred years. I swear to God, you are going to meet Nigerians, Muslim, and Christians. So you're thinking of whether this group will hijack Nigeria or this one. It's just a mere concussion that is just roaming about in our head based on what somebody has taught us. But it's no way. We are still going to be the way I'm still here. I know you are a Christian. Mm. I'm a Muslim. I see we are talking. This is how we are in hundred years. This is how our great grandchildren will sit down and talk. 
maybe by that time they will be wiser than us. They have put themselves to see how they are going to build the began and do that of their dream. Maybe they will not be where we are. Maybe they will be asking themselves when one time is the next uh, 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 launching of the next satellite to another planet mm -hmm. that they are going to or what is the new technology they are going to discuss mm -hmm. not to sit down and be talking who is Muslim who is Christian mm -hmm. who is from Arab who, who is uh, who is Yoruba who is uh, this one this is where we are today in 21st century discussing about this thing that is not supposed to be a place of this so but this is it's, it's a reality this is where we are even the educated one among us that's why they, they, they that's why their mindset is Oh, but, but speaking of the APC, uh, seeing as you, you know, had a hand in bringing in, uh, aren't you any worried that, you know, you say, if one doesn't work, you move to another. But what are the lessons, you know, so that it doesn't end up... Yeah, the, le the lessons are, we have never transit from ruling to opposition. So, 2015 is the first. So, it taught us a lot of lessons. One... There are some people, they are not in the initial thinking and they didn't participate fully when the campaign is going on. And their thought and their thinking is that they just need advantage for them to advance their own life. And we have seen it clearly. Uh, most of them have houses everywhere. We are our friends, we know them. So we just realize that at the end, they are here for themselves. But so listen. What we intend and we need to do at that moment is that even if they call me and said, Ibrahim, come and be minister, I'm supposed to tell them that I'm not competent enough to be a minister. But I know social person, social person, or you can look around to go and give them Jira the best. That the kind of thinking we taught politicians to do. And I now realize that all politicians are in politics for themselves. Including Peter Obi. Including Peter Obi including the time it including anyone including myself but what we need to put is that we need to create institutions that do check and balance even in america even obama even biden they all have their interest even putin they all have their interests of joining politics but what helps them in russia what helped them in england what helped them is that the institutions are strong to force you out of the system if you do wrong if a minister will now come and said we have a lot of money to buy election on a national television you understand if it is america he will not be minister again if he's in in in, in europe he will not be minister again but in nigeria you will see him coming out in the next eight years to contest for president that's the difference so politicians will be politicians but we have to create institutions to check the politicians for example if somebody asks me, why am I so comfortable with Mr. Peter Obi? Because Mr. Peter Obi has become governor. And I know how governors behave, even after being governors in some of the states that I know. And I know if a governor and his, as his son were in Kujia prison, two of them, for money, for, 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 for money, what do you call it? Uh, uh, laundering and other, other for, for, for the FCC issue. And I saw this set like set like that, and this governor end up becoming he's a minister then with his son Dua in it, and he end up becoming a governor. I know another governor in Sokoto, Jigawa, Bauchi. We all saw them with their kids in jail. You understand? But now end up becoming something bigger. I know of a person that is in jail. Which there are pictures. I think one of these uh, journalists you see there, Abani Koro and others, and Fanny Fanny Kaweri. But look at where he is today. He is a spokesperson to a presidential candidate. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So what we need is that politicians are going to be politicians. But if you put these politicians, all of them together, they are now up to ten thousand, and we are a population of two hundred thousand, two hundred million people. So we will not allow them to detect to us the type of Nigeria we want to live in. So what we need to do is to create a system, not just create the next president in Labour Party. That's why we have our application or platform that we call it Town Hall, where if you register, you register directly to your polling unit. It's in that your polling unit that we want you to coordinate and constitute what is called the Town Hall. So that you know what are the needs 
of that particular environment. So that even if Mr. Obita Obi become president, you understand, we have a channel of telling him, this contract that you have given in social place, this is what is happening in that place. These people that are complaining about their governor, this is what they are saying. So there has been that traffic. When we are doing 2015, we designed a scratch card. On the scratch card, we put four numbers. And that four numbers, we said, if you are donating for Mr. President, send us your polling unit number so that we can align you. Up to date, we have those numbers in my company. So that we align you to a system where you help this presidency to tell them how they are, whether they are governing. For example, they are doing conditional cast transfer, you understand? Or they are doing feeding system. So you have a system with the people. So that if government is reporting from their own side, which they will report as according to how they want to report it, but you have people that independently they can reach out to that system. That's what we are putting up now for the Labour Party. All right, I'm sorry to cut you short there. We're running out of time. So I want to quickly address, um, there's a particular, would I say, allegation that keeps dogging your candidate, which is that he's a one-man show. He does everything himself. He doesn't um, delegate and uh, he doesn't know how to have a team. I'd like you to uh, show, throw more light on that. Take, for instance, uh, when he had a visit to River State Governor, Governor Yusuf Wiki, he did make a statement um, that Governor Wiki should, um, or that Governor Wiki should leave the National for Labour Party, and Governor Wike, and the Labour Party would relinquish the state. Mm. And he has a there's a candidate for the Labour Party governorship in um, that state, and she even had a, an injury at the time. Although Peter Obi did come out to say, you know, that he wasn't aware, yeah. and people condemned him for not being aware that in every other uh, system, for instance, if um, the candidate of the APC is coming or is going to a do state, whoever is the candidate in a do state will be waiting for him. If he's going to emo state and so on. But somehow uh, he, the, in, the impression is that even people who are closest to him do not know his movements. Okay. And that is why the river states candidates who should have been the one to welcome him was not even there and had no idea. Okay. You have to separate between campaign and official visit for somebody that is doing something. Mm -hmm. When he was going, when he was asked to come on commission, it's an invitation to Peter Obi to come. Knowing fully, the, pre the, the, the governor, governor Wiki is having a candidate because he's a, from a PDP party. And he said it clear to him that I need you there. I don't need you to come with anybody. But what everybody knows is that it's a stage. Because at that moment, Mr. Wiki is having problem with his own party. Everybody is thinking that if you want to counter Kano votes, for example, or Lagos votes, for example, reverse votes are very, very important. You understand? So, us that are watching from the side, Everybody gets excited. Politicians get excited. You don't know how politicians. Politicians are just like people that just take like murder. Everybody, they get excited with things. Mm -hmm. That's why you see them even telling you things that are not even possible. That's politicians. Is that what Peter knows? Yeah, everybody knows. Everybody, knows. even himself. That's what he said. He just laughed over it because he knows that it's just a political discussion. We can know that it's just a political discussion. You understand? But we know it's going to hurt the other person. But. That is explanation. The whole of the media movement talked, called onto their Twitter and said, no, you're not supposed to do this. Everybody say you're not supposed to do this. But because he's a listening person, that's why he said he's a one-man action. I said he's not a one-man action because he listens. And he listens and he went, go to his Twitter, go to his Facebook pages, and he went directly to go and apologize to that woman. And that was everybody saw it. What we are seeing is that we have other contestants that you can't talk to them. You can't tell them they have gone wrong, and you can't tell them to change their decision. It's different between having somebody that listen, and also he will make mistakes as every other person can make mistakes. What I want people to understand that Mr. Peter O.B. is not an angel. It's not a saint. It's just a person that give his life for the young Nigerian to actualize that dream through him. 
and he promised to take that responsibility and give them the chance to do uh, to create Nigeria of their dream. That's his. That's the. That's what they call uh, 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 the covenant, or the the, 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 the the agreement between him and us. So I have not seen any time. We called him meeting in the day he comes to our meeting. We tell him to be on space. He be, he came to our space. We say we want to see him. He was there for us to see him. I know a lot of uh, emirs that asked for him to see him. He was there to see them. I know a lot of northern northern uh, uh, elite that sent for him, and he was there. He is not even waiting for them to come. He goes to them and he sit down and he listen and they ask him questions and they tell him what he what they need and how they think he can fix Nigeria and he's listening. So why are people talking like that? Let me tell you, he has done it in 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 in, in Anambra. We're having this with some of his commissioners. He said they even have their own what do you call WhatsApp group. Up to today, his commissions are intact. They are telling us. They said sometimes we go as a time and we said, sir, this is what you wants to do cannot be done. This is the right way for us to do it. Then he, uh, you argue with him. You listen to you. You listen to me. He take, and I saw. Some presidential candidate that all their aides can never tell them they are wrong. They never tell them what to do next. And I know one of them that feels that he knows everything. Ask anybody that is around that presidential candidate. He knows everything. He Which listened to nobody. What candidate is that? Aswaju and a Bolatinibu. Everybody knows that. If you go to him, he feels that he knows everything. So there's, for example, you, you can't even mention him. For example, I talk this one. If, for example, one of his aides now plays my video and said, uh, this is what a young man in, uh, in uh, Kaftan TV uh, said about you. He will start abusing that person. How did you bring this person? How did you even mention him? You know, you can see the gap. He is feeling that, like God, you understand, uh, to be, to be, you understand, that how did they even mention me to him? Because he has said it, not once, not twice. He said it himself about Mr. Peter Obi, that he cannot even mention his name. He said it about uh, Adele um, Funke, in front of everybody, he said, why are you even mentioning her name? And she has, you can see, she's a deputy governor candidate at her own merit. She's one of the most known uh, Hollywood actress in Nigeria, at her own merit. Right, uh, sorry to go. <laughs> we, we, we've run out of time, but uh, perhaps we'll have to have another update uh, later. But I just wanted to get your final uh, message. You know what it is. What is it that you want Nigerians to know right now uh, concerning the state of things? Very quickly. Now, quickly, that I really want Nigerians to get that big heart of that new Nigeria that we need. Let's go for competence. Let's go for somebody that is very healthy. Let's go for somebody that can listen to our own problem. Let's create that person. We should not follow somebody that will follow him because he paid money to become a, a candidate and pay money for us to pay him. Because if we follow that kind of person, he has already paid us. We can ask him why. There is no reason to ask him why because he give us money and he get his election. So let's go to somebody that we know we are going to make that presidency. We can check it if we come together and we can assist him to be the best president that he will, if he gives himself to serve us. But if we see people that have the tendency that we are going to serve them, they are not going to serve us, then we have to run away from that particular camp. And I'm talking to my young young politicians and young people that I see them around that place. I've been, I've been there. They just use you and dump you. Try and come and join us so that we do it for ourselves. Right. That's what we are. That's what we are created to do. That's what we're supposed to do because we can mortgage our life in the people that are very old. Maybe we'll not see them in the next few years. Right. Let's work for us because not us. Even our junior brothers have more stake in this country than even us, the populace of somebody that is 70 years of our birth. All right, Mr. Abdul Karim, thank you very much for coming. It's um, been great talking to you. Uh, like uh, it says on the screen, there it's campaign update. So hopefully, sometime uh, between now and the elections, we get to see again, and perhaps even after the elections, to do a post um, mortem on everything that has happened. Thanks for coming thank you once again. Thank you. All right, uh, that's all we'll take on the program today. Do join us tomorrow for more of the same discussions on governance and politics. Have a nice day. I'm Ahmed Nubar.